Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a completely accidental and somewhat surprising discovery of what seems to be the fastest growing black hole in the nearby universe. A black hole that creates the brightest quasar that we've ever discovered, at least within the distance of approximately 10 billion light years away from us. And what's really unusual is that this is such a bright object that it was actually always there. But it was accidentally missed by a lot of previous surveys because of its location in the night skies. Or in other words, because it was in this unusual blind spot that was created by different surveys that was basically missed because this represents a location approximately 18 degrees above the galactic plane that a lot of previous surveys managed to somehow miss. And that's of course because some of the regions of our galaxy are just very difficult to observe because there's just so much stuff, a lot of dust and a lot of other stars and a lot of other objects that make the observation of the rest of the universe so much difficult. So many surveys avoid these regions because the disk itself will just block everything behind it. Although here we're mostly talking about surveys looking for distant objects such as distant galaxies and very distant quasars. Although, quick clarification, so what is a quasar? Well, quasar is just another way of saying an extremely bright and usually extremely massive black hole, very often in the center of a galaxy that's feeding so fast and produces so much energy that it ends up creating the brightest objects in the universe, the objects visible literally from the edge of the universe. With the word quasar itself simply meaning quasi-stellar radio source. And we actually know quite a lot of these objects and many of them have been quite extensively studied. And as far as we know, they're all produced in exactly the same way, the way that you see right here. So basically, these are black holes that are feeding extremely fast. And because of their power and also because of the way that they're feeding, they also tend to produce a lot of feedback that tends to then change the galaxies where they're located. As a matter of fact, many scientists today even believe that many quasars eventually sort of kill the galaxies, stopping the production of stars. Or at least some do, not all of them. And the more powerful the quasar, the more powerful the illumination or the so-called feedback mechanism that then changes the galaxy. This is actually the phenomenon that generally transforms the galaxies and tends to create very different types of galaxies afterwards. And the more massive the black hole, the more of this feedback mechanism is going to be creating, the more brightness and the more power it's going to be producing as well. And actually, fun fact here, one of the main reasons some scientists believe that the Milky Way galaxy is kind of unique and kind of different from a lot of other galaxies is that the black hole here, the Sagittarius A star black hole, is much, much smaller in terms of mass and in terms of size compared to a lot of other supermassive black holes in other galaxies. And because of this, it probably was never a very powerful quasar to begin with, and because of this, it probably never really influenced a lot of objects in the vicinity to the same extent as some of the other black holes. And because of this, our planet might have had a chance to establish permanent life. Now, it's a speculation that's somewhat difficult to prove, but many scientists do believe this idea, and it sort of is one of the reasons why we think we're located in an extremely unique galaxy. But we'll actually talk more about why we think so in some of the future videos. But quasars are really important in modern navigation and modern communication. Pretty much every modern system using GPS or any other system that uses navigation or time measurement from some of the sources on the ground will rely on the map you see right here. This shows us the various quasars used to determine the exact location on the planet. So in other words, quasars are some of the most important objects when it comes to directly detect something on the planet. I've actually discussed this in some of the older videos that should be in the description or somewhere right there, but in essence, quasars are essential for modern technology, for modern timekeeping, and for modern GPS systems that rely on extreme precision. And here we're specifically talking about quasars that are very bright. And so it is very, very surprising that the scientists have just found one of the brightest quasars literally in plain sight. The quasar that produces approximately 7,000 times more luminosity, more light, than our entire galaxy, the Milky Way. And that is ridiculously bright. According to the scientists behind this paper, it sort of means that we found the fastest growing black hole ever. The black hole that seems to be absorbing roughly around one mass of planet Earth every single second. Okay, let me repeat this. Every single second, it's eating a single planet Earth. That's by mass, of course. And in the process, produces a tremendous amount of energy. Now, as you probably already know, or you might have heard before, the energy itself in this case is not really coming from the black hole, as it's actually coming from the accretion disk. The black hole itself is obviously black, it doesn't really allow any light to escape, 
but the accretion disk, because of its size and because of its energy, will end up creating tremendous amount of luminosity and will also create a lot of energy that will then escape from this region. It also creates a kind of a radiation pressure, very similar to a typical star, where a lot of things, a lot of gas, a lot of dust, sort of gets pushed away from the center of the galaxy and moves a little bit to the outskirts, or sometimes actually gets completely displaced by all of this pressure. There is also a very important concept known as the Addington luminosity that comes into play here. It refers to a kind of a balance reached between the gravity and the pressure from the luminosity itself. So basically, the brightness here will push things away, whereas the gravity is going to pull things in. And at some point, a kind of a balance is reached. Now, if you get too much luminosity, if things start to get too bright, the object will most likely fall apart. Usually, this is a case with many stars. Whereas if the outer pressure and the luminosity stops, the object starts to collapse and then can actually initiate a supernova, for example. And because of the Eddington limit, as it's known, there is a limit to how fast certain black holes can grow in size. Because as the black hole grows in size, it starts to emit more luminosity, and this starts to push away a lot of the mass that tries to come in. At some point, it reaches the balance, with the total growth of the black hole sort of becoming more or less permanent. This is actually one of the reasons why the scientists have trouble explaining the existence of some of the most massive black holes in the ancient universe. A lot of them simply did not have enough time in the universe to become so massive. But in this particular case, this black hole is approximately 2.6 billion times the mass of the Sun, and based on the observations of its Addington luminosity, it seems to make sense. But what doesn't make sense is, why is it still so bright and why is it still eating so much material? Oh, and a quick clarification. The light coming from this particular black hole is about 7 billion years old, which means that by now the black hole very likely quieted down. But it's still the youngest quasar currently known to us to be so extremely powerful. The quasar currently known as G1144-4308. The quasar that beats the previous record holder, 3C273 that you see right here, by about 8 times. Essentially it's about 8 times brighter than this. But despite its brightness, it was only found when the scientists were actually looking for different binary stars and were looking at things in the ultraviolet light. But because it's so bright, it even appears in some of the oldest photographs taken back in 1901. So it was always there, it was always very bright, but we just somehow missed it. And really the biggest mystery about this quasar is why is it still active? Many quasars by that time in the universe have already quieted down. None of them were producing so much energy. Yet this one is still doing stuff, and still doing stuff very actively. Why? Yeah, that's not really known right now. One potential explanation here is a collision between two different galaxies, with maybe even two different quasars just combining into one and creating some kind of a mega quasar, or alternatively maybe being some kind of a black hole that's spinning super super fast, releasing so much more energy than any other black hole. At the moment, it's not really clear. It's just clear that this object is very bright, so bright as a matter of fact that apparently you can even see it with a regular telescope during the night that's dark enough. More intriguingly, the same team that found this quasar also identified 80 more potential candidates that might have been missed by previous surveys. All of this, by the way, was part of the SkyMapper project, a project that's been collecting a lot of data about these southern skies, focusing on some of the oldest galaxies, various types of unusual stars in the galaxy, and even things like dark energy. The link for the project is in the description below. And so, a pretty interesting discovery, and a pretty unusual one at that, but I guess for now that's pretty much all we know. It will probably take a few more months before the scientists can find out more about this particular quasar, and before they can find out the reasons why it's so bright, but at the moment it's definitely a record holder, and it's definitely a quasar we'll be talking more about in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.